Welcome back. So today we are going to talk about another big bass set, and this one is called Octave by a brand named Tigerism. So you may not have heard of Tigerism, but they've actually been around for quite a while, just operating under a different name. Previously, they released The Dark Magician, which was under M.I.M. So same group of people, same guy who tuned Dark Magician, tuned Octave, same person who brought that one to market. Ethan Music 7 is now named Eason Music. I don't remember if there's a number after his name, but same group of people um, just operating under a different name for this particular set. And uh, so we'll talk about a little bit more uh in a minute but this is what it looks like up close so i think the black and gold this one comes in silver and gold as well but it looks like judging from the packaging and uh the theming on the box i think the black and gold was what they had in mind for uh theme but the silver and gold actually looks pretty good too so nice metal shells tiger stripes brass nozzle uh, everything is quite nice on the build there's not a whole lot in the box. This one is another one where this box was essentially made to uh, fit around this case. And the case, again, is very nice. Inside the case, you do get uh, one of these. I call these IEM holders, but they're actually very nice. So on one side, you get it's two, it's two pairs of tips. So these are, I think, KB07-ish on that side. And this one, I'm not sure where these, one, these come from. These are a okay, shade of purple just slightly smaller bore size so you do get two sets of nice tips this nice IEM case holder and the um, cable is super nice it kind of looks like it's straight out of a nice HCK catalog but yeah very nice uh, copper cable very nice heavy duty hardware this one is 4.4 and I think 4.4 might be the only version that they come in so there you go but yeah, super, super beefy cable. I actually believe there's another cable. I think the silver one actually had a different cable. Um, but this one is the black and gold. So I think black, gold, copper, I think all those things theme nicely together. So we will jump into it and we'll start with what I just kind of mentioned. What's special about this one, same driver and group behind Dark Magician, same graphene, 10 millimeter graphene driver. Is it tuned like a Dark Magician? No, this one has a different style tuning. But as I mentioned, same exact people um, behind Dark Magician are behind Tigerism. Uh, and the driver is the same one that they used in uh, Dark Magician. So member of the bass club. And as I just as I started, yes, it's definitely a big bass shelf. Is it bass head? I'll say no. It's kind of more of a V-shaped big bass set. Reminiscent of those older V-shaped sets that... Uh, but has the advantage that they're using high quality graphene driver instead of in the past. And this goes back, you know, at least probably two or three years. Some of the old KZ uh, big V shape sets that were using BAs to hit that, that treble level. And that just created the big bass, but you ended up with metallic sounding BAs. And there was a couple sets that we'll talk about later down here that really set the set the mark for what a big bass set with a dynamic driver or even one BA should actually sound like when you spend uh, the money for a higher quality set. So we'll get to that in a minute too. But the advantage here is you get the detail and resolution and extension without the BA problems. So if we look at what this one looks like on the graph and I will talk about X1 because it has the same driver, similar driver, I think it's the same driver, but essentially a very similar signature but this one sort of addresses the problems that i talked about with x1 so you still have this big fun bass shelf treble is actually bumped up in octave which is exactly the main complaint that uh, i had on x1 it's just a little bit low so he had a nice bass head tilt but as far as was it natural or something that can really do cross genre you know not worry about what your playlist look like you know that was a little harder on x1 whereas that gets corrected on octave so again just another big bass set you're probably looking at this set for the bass level and then you're trying to get a set that has nice extension and treble and that's sort of exactly where octave hits uh, that mark so similar to X1, like I just said, yes, it's it corrects a lot of the things that we that I nitpicked on the treble and how the treble affected the overall um, 
bass control, less boom. X1 is a super boomy set. This one has much less boom, a lot more bass control, more treble like I talked about. So that more treble and balance actually uh, sounds a lot better across you know, not just your bass test tracks and better stage, which comes from better treble. So uh, pretty much everything that was nitpicky on X1 is uh, corrected on this guy. So can the X1 be modded so it's a little closer to this one? Yes, that one was a loner for me, but yes. Um, if you actually go back to my review on X1 and read the comments, you'll see that someone actually talked about that specific topic. So, and of everything on the sheet, this one is, I think, the most important bit and why people are going to look at Octave or why you may not look at Octave. But in the past, uh, or yeah, so sound-wise, big bass shape. But in the past, when people would ask for, hey, I'm looking for a big bass set, I'm looking for a bass headset, and you always saw two sets that were recommended, and one's a lot, lot older than the other one. But TFC number three was, I think, going back to some one of the original affordable bass headsets. It was about 100 and something dollars. But that was really the original high-quality bass headset that had a really heavy hard-hitting bass, and the treble was kind of wonky, but, you know, as far as a recommendation, that was that was the recommendation for a really long time. Then the OH-10 kind of came around, and big bass with a balanced armature, but essentially they both covered the same recommended set, right? Hey, I'm looking for the bass headset. I'm looking for a really, I like a lot of bass. I'm looking for a high-quality set with a lot of bass. Essentially, those two sets hit that mark, and I think Octave is exactly it's the third brother to that to that trio or duo um these are really marketed towards you know there is a market for those and oh 10 i think was a 200 dollars set that one was a hundred and something dollar set so when you look at this guy which is i think 140 dollars and you think well it's kind of a lot but then you, you go back and look at how many people recommended these two sets how many people still like these two sets i do think there is a market for this big base hundred dollar plus sets and i i will consider all three of them base specialists and they're targeting people who like more base high quality more base that's exactly what this one is targeting and if we look at how it fits against all three you can kind of see it actually corrects some of the problems with that one too so tfc number three a little more base in the blue and then OH-10 and Tigerism, essentially the same base shelf. But this is really where where the, the first two, number three and OH-10, kind of got a little wonky, was TFC number three really lifted this upper kind of middle treble bit, and people would say it has great bass, but the treble's a little, I don't know, a little sharp, a little um, not as pleasing to listen to. OH-10, I would say, is actually a great bass set. That shell weighs 10 pounds. The bass sounds great. But again, this upper mid, lower treble balanced armature that they put there is just a little bit too sharp. I like that one. So it's modded. So it's actually really close to where Octave is. And then when you see Octave in the red, you know, it's just a more balanced, more pleasing treble. But you still have the very impactful banging bass, but not nearly as fatiguing as the other two sets in their stock form. So... Yeah, so if you've ever asked about number three, OH10, you know exactly what octave is, what market they are filling, and what hole they're filling in the market. It, it's exactly uh, where those two sit. So big bass, high quality big bass, V-shape, banger, nice treble that extends out, and that's exactly where that one fits. So bass, the rest of this stuff, uh, you pretty much know if you've asked about OH10 or um, number three. The bass, it's sort of, and I'll say this one is where X1 was really all about the boom. That one was a huge, boomy set, and they embraced the boom, obviously, because it's, and, and by boom, it's sort of impactful with a whole lot of bloat around it. That's what boom is, essentially. So this one, they really kind of reined the back, more control, same level, but more control, less bloat. Uh, and when you combine it with the increased treble, it really opens up to more genres beyond bass test tracks, like I said. This one, you can kind of get away with some rock and, and other things that are beyond really heavy bass tracks. Um, that The balance that they brought to it actually works out quite well. Um, so, so while tighter, I think the bass is a lot tighter than X1, it's still a high level of bass targeting V-shaped signature fans who want high quality 
um, Rumble and Slam, right? I think, you know, without a doubt, people who are looking for these two sets, people who are going to be searching for Octave, are looking for a big V-shaped slot, big V-shaped set with uh, a lot of Slam, and that's exactly what Octave does. Mids, they're still V-shaped. You can't, can't really get around the V-shaped mids, and they tend to ride over the bass more than X1, right? X1 was just uh, kind of a little too boomy, uh, but again, corrected in octave because they gave you a little more treble contribution. Also corrects the timbre issues on the dark treble with X1, uh, which opens up more genres as well. So you don't have to really focus on bass tracks. This one handles mids and treble quite well. V-shaped fans will trade some of that uh, bleed into the mids for more tactile bass. And that's exactly what these this set, those three sets, people were looking for that bass that hits hard, that feels a little more tactile, that can shake your ear a little bit. That's exactly what Octave does. So while not tuned like Dark Magician, it does, which has very special mids, I think the mids are actually pretty good in this style. Again, Big V-shaped sets have are going to have some recessed mids. Some part of the mids is going to sound a little bit back. This driver's characteristics kind of allowed Octave to have that cleaner mids without pushing the treble too far, as you see in, in OH10 and number three. And that's exactly what I'm talking about here, is those sets, in the past, they you know, maybe the dynamic driver in OH10 wasn't perfect at handling the treble and getting that level of treble. So... They had the base shelf and the dynamic driver use the balanced armature to get this up and out. Number three, I think, just did what they had at the time. That's kind of an older set, maybe four years old by at this point. So older dynamic driver, um, you can kind of see it didn't quite have the extension out here that Octave does. So Octave is a modern take without having to really push the treble too far to make it too fatiguing. Um, really nice graphene driver, so lots of bass, but the mids aren't as muddy as you're thinking they're going to be. And that's and that was why these two sets were popular. It's for that exact reason. The mids were still had some clarity to it. And whether you push the treble too much or use octaves, better driver to achieve the same effect. Um, that's why these sets are uh, going to be desirable. So this set uh, is a V-shape with some room for turning it up. So again, this... This little upper mid bit is, you know, not all that pushed too hard, so you can turn this one up without getting into OH10 or number threes, you know, peaking this right there. This one is definitely one that you can turn up, and it actually sounds a lot better turned up if you ask me my opinion on that. Treble-wise, so where X1 was too low, Octave is right on for hitting that balanced V. Most notable is the timbre correction and the stage expansion. You know, those two things that were... Um, wrong but they were they were a big nitpick on x1 it just you know that set is tilted towards a base head and those two things were sort of noticeably um i don't know off on that set but stage expansion and having a more correct timer is actually um uh, what octave did pretty well clearly a bit more tuning experience shows here against the x1 and the x1 retune right the x1 was retuned twice there was an original one the one i had actually listened to was actually the retune I think Octave kind of takes it a step further and made it a balanced set with a more correct uh, sound signature. Level is still V without fatiguing and sibilance, right? So we still have we still have sort of what made X1 a really nice, fun, big bass set. Uh, they brought this down a little too low, so you really had to either turn it up and you didn't quite get enough treble, but the stage was was also a problem here and it, and, and actually sounded quite in your head, kind of like a bass head set, you know, probably should be because it was so in your head where Octave actually added the right amount of treble to bring that out into a nice stage, open things up, you know, just a nice, more open, balanced uh, sound to it. So stage, like I just talked about, sound, uh, sounds like the price. I think the stage is as big as it should be for the price. Really what X1 needed I mean, without so much bass, there needs to be, with so much bass, there really needs to be more space and separation around instruments, which is what you get on Octave. And, and the bit that was really off on X1 and why people were modding it is to really get both of those things um, back into X1. So no need to, to fool with it. Octave already did it and did it well. So thank you guys again for tuning in, and I will see you next time.